Good morning, church. How's everybody doing tonight? Today. This morning. <laughs> this morning, tonight, today. It's all blending together. Uh, we're not on a little bit low of sleep. Um, we had concrete Friday and Saturday, and we were praising through the night, weren't we? So yeah, definitely powered by uh, coffee and the Holy Spirit this morning. And um, things look a little different up here, but uh, I just want to tell you a little bit about our weekend that we just had. Um, man, it was so powerful, and every every year we come with with expectations of, of what God's going to do, and He completely blows the roof off the house. And um, it's, it's crazy that, you know, we, we, sing, we were singing about, um, may I never lose the wonder of his presence and how inspiring the youth are in, in their worship and how, how much surrender they have. We had one of our sessions where we ended with prayer and for an hour, hour and a half, it was just prayer. And there was groups of kids and and people scattered throughout the whole sanctuary, praying over one another, praying for each other. And man, it was just powerful. God was moving this weekend. And um, if I can encourage you to, to explore that childlike faith um, this morning, as it maybe some things are a little bit uncomfortable, and uncomfortable can be good. Um, we're pushed to, to praise God no matter what. We'll praise Him in the valley and praise Him in the mountains. And so um, I want to invite the youth to come forward this morning. I want them to, to, to show you a little bit of what this weekend meant to all of us. I know we're just so excited for this morning. And I invite the rest of you to join in, stand as we worship together. I'm not a 
Well, feel free to take a seat, and youth, you can stay right here if you'd like. We're going to be... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, um, if this is your first Sunday here, you picked a really, really good Sunday to be here. This has been an amazing, amazing weekend, as uh, I had a chance just to kind of sit in the, a bit more of the peripheral of the, the weekend, but just to see God at work amongst our youth. And so to see over 150 youth and leaders and volunteers gathering and worshiping God and serving God and allowing God to move, it has just been an amazing weekend. So I want to welcome each of you here, those of who are joining online, we're so glad you're joining us as well. If you would like to uh, reach out to us, we would love to hear from you. So if you're a uh, new time uh, visitor with us, uh, you can fill out a connecting card, it's in the seat back right in front of you, you can fill that out. Take it to the welcome desk, and the welcome desk would uh, love to give you a gift and answer any questions you may have, as well as those who are joining online. If you would like to reach out to one of the online hosts, they as well would love to, to help you and answer any questions you might have. It is our desire as a church to reach out in love to God, to his people, and to the world. It's what we long to do in all that we do. Whether it's a youth weekend, uh, whether it's um, ministering to our shut-ins, in all that we do, we long that people would come into a vibrant relationship with God, that people would uh, reach out and serve those around them, and then reach out with the love of the gospel to the people um, that are, are beyond our church's ministries. And so, again, uh, so, so delighted to have that mission guiding us. Would like to, uh, as well... Um, mention that uh, there are uh, some different ways that you can reach out to us by looking at the website, uh, going to the welcome desk. They would love to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you so much for those who partner with us as a congregation uh, in, in uh, giving of your financial donations, your, your tithes, your gifts, your offerings. Uh, we, we don't take that for granted and are so thankful that as you, out of the blessing that God has blessed you with, you're able to, in turn, bless others. We get to uh, a front row seat of seeing God changing lives. And so thank you for that. There are four different ways you can give. They're on the uh, screen behind me, so if you would like to participate in that, uh, no obligation, but we, we are truly thankful. We work together with so many other organizations, Christian organizations in our community and other churches, and if you've been around Brandon for a while, then you know that it's been our tradition that the churches of Brandon gather for Good Friday service. And so Good Friday, uh, which is, this is Palm Sunday, and so coming up in just a few days, uh, Friday, we're going to be at the Westman Centennial Auditorium. Uh, just so excited to, to, to participate. We've got Exalt Brandon. And if you don't know what Exalt Brandon is, Exalt Brandon is a team of people that God has formed over these last months to put together worship services for the youth of our city. And so Exalt Brandon is going to be leading the singing portion of that service. We've got Pastor Shea uh, from Grace to You Church, and so delighted to hear what he's going to share, uh, as well as we've got a cross-section of many of our churches are going to be participating. And so that it's the Westman Centennial Auditorium this Good Friday uh, at 11 o'clock. So glad that our churches gather together. And on that note, you rem may remember that uh, we work together for a common mission through the month of February, the churches of this community. And so we uh, collected food for a food drive for Samaritan's House. And uh, our city churches across Brandon uh, collected 3,500 pounds of food that was donated to Samaritan's House. Yeah. So really excited to be able to, to, to serve the people of our city in that way. Next uh, Sunday then, after Good Friday, is... Uh, Easter Sunday, and Easter Sunday, we are going to have baptisms. If you'd like more information about baptism, you can talk to the people at the welcome desk. You can also reach out to the church office this week if you want any more information. But next week, we are going to have you covered. If you'd like to come and be baptized, uh, we are going to be doing that during the service. And we're going to have you, we'll have all the clothing, all the, the, the elements that you're going to need to participate in baptism. And, and um, I put my hat in the ring, and I get to actually be in the tank next week, so I'm really excited to be able to baptize some people as they profess their faith in Jesus Christ. And so, as I already mentioned, uh, we had concrete this week, and weekend, yeah. 
you know, I've, I've, I was talking to a few people after the first service, and as even as I was praying into this, re- recognizing that, you know, for me, I'm getting older. Sometimes I get jaded, and I wonder, you know, God, what are you, what are you doing? And I was talking to one of the youth last night as, as just saying, saying, you know, you probably look through your, the walls of your high school and just see darkness. And yet, as I was here last evening, and as I watched as the, the, the youth of our city gathering like this, and then as they began to gather and pray for an hour or more, praying for each other, and I had a chance to pray with some of the youth as they uh, confessed sin and made declarations of Jesus Christ uh, in their life, uh, you know, I don't think anybody told them that things are dark out there. And I'm so thankful for the youth that you recognize the call of God. You know, the, uh, the, the theme verse comes out of Matthew chapter 16 is one of the passages where it talks about, you know, Jesus saying, if anyone would come after me, he would deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. And your speaker, Jody, talked about that. But, you know, just before that, those verses is another passage where, where Jesus would say to Peter and his disciples that I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And last night, I saw a very visible sign that Jesus is continuing through this next generation to build his church. And so I'm so thankful that you are leading the charge for us today and in this season as you pursue Jesus and calling us old timers to pursue Jesus as well. And so you're going to see a recap video a little bit later on. Yeah, right on. Thank you. You're going to see a recap video a little bit later on in the service, and uh, you're, you're going to want to, uh, you're, going to, you're going to really enjoy seeing about it. But now, uh, I want to invite us uh, into worship. There's a, a video that's going to lead us into our time of worship and songs. So sit and enjoy and allow the Holy Spirit to guide you through this morning. God bless. Jesus of Nazareth. I saw what you did to the leper on the road this morning. My friend has been paralyzed since childhood. He has no hope but you. Please, do for him what you did for the leper. That's a rope! Put it back, man! When Jesus returned to Capernaum several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon the the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room, even outside the door. And while he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, so they dug a hole through the roof above his head.
But I ask you, which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven, or rise up and walk? It's easy to say anything, no? But to show you, and so that you may know that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. I say to you, my son, rise. you all to stand as we worship together. Tear off the roof, the king's in the house. Just give me to Jesus, I don't care how. I don't have to wait to get the healing. I got a faith without a ceiling So tear off the roof, the king's in the house There's power in the presence, power in the blood Power in the name of Jesus There's power in the presence, power in the blood Power in the name of Jesus and He has more in the hem of his garment the camp of the enemy there's power in the presence power in the blood power in the name of Jesus faith beyond the bleeding cause I didn't come here to hide in the crowd oh. there's power in the presence, power in the blood, power in the name of Jesus there's power in the presence power in the blood power in the name of Jesus he has more in the hell of the enemy there's power in the presence power in the blood power in the name of Jesus
and they brought it to Jesus and throwing their cloaks on a colt they set Jesus on it and as he rode along they spread their cloaks on the road and he was drawing near already on the way down to the Mount of Olives and the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice with all the mighty works they had seen saying blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord peace on earth and glory in the highest and some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him teacher rebuke your disciples and he said I tell you if these were silent their very stones would cry out I'm so thankful that this weekend the stones didn't have to have to cry out and you as young people declared the glory Hosanna Hosanna in the highest Please feel free to take a seat and join with me in prayer. Father, we come into these moments and we thank you that ours is a faith of worship. And we recognize that worship looks different. And even this Sunday, it looks different. It looked different than over 2,000 years ago when Jesus you were coming in to the city of Jerusalem. And yet ours is a faith where we declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so we bring glory to you, Father, our Heavenly Father, through the exaltation of the name of Jesus Christ. We come here today, Father, and I'm so thankful is this weekend I, I got to witness as dozens of young people praying for each other, crying out to you, making commitments for you, confessing their sin. And even last evening is this altar area was a place of worship for the young people. I pray that wherever each one sits, each would recognize the magnitude of sin that wages war in their heart. But even more than that, I pray that each one who sits in this room would understand the grace of God. That when we confess our sin, you are the one who's faithful. Father, we, we're reminded that we are, we are faithless so many times. But when we can muster the, the faith to come to you and say, I'm sorry for the sin I've committed, I turn to you for forgiveness. I thank you that you never turn away anyone. And so may each one in these moments, as they confess their sin, sin that they committed maybe even in the last hour, the last day, the last week, that Father, you would come into, the, into their lives and remind them once again that your grace is sufficient even in this moment. We thank you, Father, that as we gather in this place, that we join together with other ministries that are across our city and around the world. We also thank you, Father, for the, the churches that we get to partner with, through things like collecting food, Good Friday, worshiping you. And yet, Father, we would also recognize um, that in each of the local expressions, they are there because we believe you have ordained them to be. We pray specifically for Vineyard Community Church and we thank you for Pastor Trevor, Pastor Thea, as they give leadership to that congregation and as you are using them mightily to bring life and hope into people who call our downtown region their home. And so I thank you, Pete, Father, that you are sending people there in need of the hope that is offered in Jesus Christ. So thank you for the work that you're doing in that vineyard church. We thank you as well, Father, for the place of rescue in Cambodia. And we thank you that we can partner with that organization as they help AIDS orphans, widows, Elderly, I thank you, Father, that you are, are, are again bringing healing and hope to those that come to that place. Father, we also want to pray for 
uh, the names in the vases. These names represent individuals in our own lives who have uh, our family, our friends, somebody who's close to us, and we pray, Father, for them that you would open the eyes of their hearts to the truth of the good news of Jesus Christ, that they would reach out to Jesus and find the forgiveness and the new life that is found in him. Thank you that we can be born again into a living hope that is found in him. So I pray, Father, for the, those that have given financially to our church and to the organizations within the city. Father, we thank you that you can use this money to impact the lives of people around us. And may you bless those that give through their financial donations. Bless the gifts as we receive them. And may we um, sit back and see the miracle power that is at work when you change this money into lives that are transformed. So we give you thanks. As Pastor Dallas comes and opens your word to us, I pray that we would be receptive to hear that which you want to speak into our lives. May our eyes be open to what we need to see. May our ears be open to what we need to hear. May his mouth be opened to declare that which you have placed upon his heart and that your Holy Spirit be the one that does the ultimate applying of these scriptures to our lives. So bless him. Bless us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I've been looking forward to this weekend since March 2022. I got the ghost, so I don't need a rose, but I might push a phantom that's right off the lot. I know I'm serving the father of time, and that's whether I got on a paddock or not. Plot for the drip and the line for the whip, but I've counted a little a lot. Placing my treasure in heaven where it'll get better. Yeah, pledge my allegiance. I'm reading Ephesians. I grew with the heathens. I ran with hyenas. They told me to beat it. That led me to Jesus. He led me to freedom. The trouble defeated. We keep it in season. Look, you gotta see it. The home of the free has got 10,000 reasons. No people for pleasing. No fault of the trees. And we really believe this point. Uh, five on the dot. Bring his will to the table. I'm never entangled. I'm giving you red table time. Yeah, baby and Dilly, we setting it Well, I'm going to use the same joke if you're here in the first service, but I know what you're all thinking, and that's, how did you make the fire look so real in those videos? Because there's no way we could have real flames in this probably very combustible room. Um, you can talk to Jake Thiessen about that. Thank you, Jake, for that highlight video that really captured the video. Um, I do want to thank everyone that made this weekend possible. Thank you to Bethany for organizing it. Thank you to... Yeah. Thank you to Jody Ray, who is our speaker this week uh, from Killarney. Thank you to the volunteer. We can just, yeah, we've got a good rhythm going. <laughs> the volunteers. Thank you to the youth for leading us this weekend. Um, it's a remarkable thing to be a part of, and I know I speak on behalf of all that were involved this weekend that we're just so thankful to have been able to be a part of it. There were so many people reaching out this year saying, I want to be a part of this event, Concrete. I want to help out in whatever way I can. I'll make cookies, I'll run some tech, I'll, I'll be security for you at the weekend, which we need, uh, and uh, not for scary reasons, but well, that's a sermon for a different time. Uh, I think Daryl touched on that last week, actually. Anyways, um, <laughs> gonna move on before I get into trouble. Uh, I'm really hoping just to make it through this morning because, you know, they, they say, I think, that every year as a youth pastor is like dog years where it's seven per one. Um, and so all God's youth pastors said amen.
Um, I think it's so fitting that we're here on Palm Sunday following the weekend that we had where praises and declarations of who God is and what he's like and what he's done were declared both in worship, through singing, through the word preached, through fellowship with one another, through breathing fire, uh, through all these things. It was incredible. And um, I think it's just so fitting because we see kind of some similarities uh, as we look back at Palm Sunday and what that was like. And when Jesus would ride into Jerusalem on a donkey's colt, Uh, And the people would be declaring, Hosanna, Hosanna, which is to to declare Jesus king. Um, In Jewish um, tradition, culture, Hebrew language, uh, Hosanna has several meanings. One is that king, you are king. But the other is really important for where we're going this morning. And that's this, that Hosanna means save now, save now. And so this, this weekend at Concrete, our speaker Jody Ray uh, was looking at the life of Peter and just what a journey that was. And one of the accounts that she looked at was when Peter walked on the water with Jesus, right? He said, if that's you, then let me come out to you. And he walked out onto the water. But when he began to doubt uh, what he was doing, he began to sink and began to drown. And he called out, save me. I'm drowning. And it's that kind of save me that we find in the meaning of Hosanna. It's that I've totally given up on myself and my own ability at this point. I'm going to die unless you save me. Hosanna. Hosanna. And that important or that meaning is very important to carry into what we understand of Palm Sunday. Because while things look really good at the outset in this passage, as the crowds are crying out, Hosanna, as children and young people are crying out, Hosanna. If you follow the account and you read on, you find that things take an ugly turn very quickly. And they go from crying out, Hosanna, to crying out, crucify him, away with him. And if we aren't careful, so say you came to this weekend at Concrete and you had a spiritually high moment. You've experienced God in ways you never have before. If you are not careful in checking what your expectations are, and if you allow them to be your guide of this is what it's going to be like, I've stood at the top of the mountain, and I'm going to continue to be on this mountaintop for the rest of my days. It's going to continue to be so good. If that's your expectation, then the moment that you enter into the valley, and you will enter into the valley, you're going to find just how shallow your declaration of Hosanna really was. And so we need to be careful in checking our expectations. We cannot allow them to be our guide. So it's interesting through this passage, uh, John chapter 12 is where we'll be, and we're specifically going to be looking at uh, verse 19. Because in it, there's this, this posture and this attitude which really comes to the surface that we see in the Pharisees. And I think it's so important that we really sit with this And ask ourselves, is that me? Is that my posture? Are these my expectations? Are these depicting what things are going to be like going forward? And so in John chapter 12, verse 19, after Jesus has entered into Jerusalem, the people have cried out, Hosanna. Everyone's caught up in the excitement. You see this one group, the Pharisees, who are the religious leaders, And you see kind of the ugly side of their attitude and their posture as they would say. So it says in verse 19, So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Talking to one another again. Look, the world, the whole world has gone after him. But you are gaining nothing. What are you going to do about it? This is not what we want. This is not what we've been working towards. This is not what we expected the Messiah would be like. A whole lot of backstory is needed to kind of bring ourselves up to speed on this. In fact, there's a whole, like, this much of the Bible's worth before we get to this point. And yet it all highlights what's happening and how deep and profound it is in this moment in history. Because you had things like the temple, in Jerusalem, which started as the tabernacle, which is way back in the Bible. But in things like the temple and the tabernacle, so these were, these were structures where they had leaders working within them, 
And they were meant to point the people to God, to point people to Hosanna. You need him. Hosanna. In fact, the, the imagery that you would find in how the temple and the tabernacle were built and designed, there's a whole lot of imagery of the Garden of Eden. So it's like, look, that, that's God's heart. As you live out your faith, as you live out your life, you know, good or bad, mountain high, valley low, this is God's heart, that he longs to dwell with his people. As the very end of the Bible would say, behold, God's dwelling place is with humanity. That's his heart. That's where we're going. That's what the temple and tabernacle were meant to point people to. And yet these were ironically the very things which became idols. People began to worship the temple, the building, the structure, the system, the institution, the leaders who were proponents of this. So you had the Pharisees. You had the religious leaders in Jerusalem who figured, hey, I can, I can use this to my advantage. I can set myself up real nice if I, if I can, you know, if I can say, this is what this passage means, and you actually, you need to fit that to a T, fit this mold, just like myself, I'm the poster child, keep up, fit this mold, and, and, and then you'll be all right. But make sure that you're doing everything I say, right? And, like, if you grew up with an older sibling, you know this cheap trick, right? They do everything I say, and it'll be all right. It isn't. <laughs> Talk to my brother. He's older, so... He'll have a different version of that story, but it's cheap tricks. They took the very thing which was meant to point the people to God, which was meant to remind us our desperate need for God to save us, our desperate need for Hosanna, and they turned it into just another idol in the flooded marketplace of idols. And so it flips, and you see this posture and this attitude in the Pharisees in this moment. You know, they, they, they had expectations. They had preferences for what the Messiah would be like. They expected Jesus to ride in on this mighty war horse, right, to, to throw down the Roman Empire, to throw down the one nation which had been oppressing them. That was their, their scope of salvation. Just save us from Rome. That's all we ask. That's all we want. And yet Jesus' plan was so much greater because he would throw down an enemy far greater, far more significant. The one that plagues each of us of sin, death, and shame. That was his plan. And so he, he meets their expectations and runs right in the face of them, right? Where they're expecting like this conquering hero coming in, people, you know, horns and everything, the whole, the whole thing. He rides in on a donkey's colt, a baby donkey. I mean, not a baby donkey, but I don't know. Big enough to ride, obviously. Um, and he runs right in the face of their expectations. He says, no, 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 no. I know, I know what you're expecting. I know what you want. I know what you think that you need, but I know, I actually know what you need is so much greater than your limited expectations and preferences. And so Jesus just flies in the face of all these things the same way that he can do for each of us. And that's where we need to be so careful to check our expectations. Because again, you know, maybe you're on the, the mountaintop right now and you're thinking like, yeah, this is, everything's good now, right? It's gonna be all linear from here. This is the TSN turning point. The game will be victory in no time with no more valleys. And again, if that's your expectation moving forward, you're gonna realize just how shallow your declaration of Hosanna really was. Because if you see Jesus as he is, if you honestly and sincerely declare Hosanna every day with everything you have, he will lead you to far deeper communion with him, regardless of if you're standing on a mountaintop or in a valley. He will remain the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and forevermore. That's what he would have you find in who he is as Hosanna. But you'll need to check those expectations. Ask him to search me and know me. Like, look, look for the things that even I don't see right now. See, you've got this crowd, which kind of represents, I think, the mass population of, of society kind of thing, where it's like, 
you know, they're kind of just, maybe, for some of them, I'm speculating, but maybe they, they hear, like, all the, the, the excitement and all the, the praise and Hosanna. It's like, oh, okay, I'll join in this. Like, oh, Hosanna, yes, Hosanna. And then maybe the same way. It's, the crowd went the other way then. And crucify him. Okay, crucify him, yes. And we just kind of go along with the flow, not actually, you know, thinking, like, what's God actually doing in the midst of this? Where's God actually leading me? And we can so easily just kind of blob and bob along with the tides of what society is doing around us, and we will miss what God is doing in our midst. And you see that in this crowd, because it's within a week that it would change from Hosanna to crucify him. Within a week. And yet, as we continue, it gets even worse when, again, you look at the posture of the Pharisees. You see, we're gaining nothing from Jesus. The whole world's going after him. What are we getting? You know, who's, who's given any, any cares about our institution, about our program, about our system, our, our, our authority? Who's listening to us anymore? You're gaining nothing. In fact, you're, you're losing things now. This is not good. And you see that ugly posture in the Pharisees, but do you see that ugly posture within yourself? Do you see the expectations and preferences that you have for church, for worship, for community, for fellowship? And do you see just how ugly they can become if they go unchecked? I want to worship this way. I want this much technology. I want this little technology. Bring back the projectors where you're, you know, sliding the slides along the, the thing. Do you see your expectations and your preferences and have you allowed them even already to become your guide? And if you have, you are in desperate need of crying out, Hosanna. Even if you haven't, even if things are seeming pretty good for you, you also have desperate need for crying out, Hosanna. We all have desperate need of crying out, Hosanna. Diedrich Bonhoeffer had something profound to say about those who would allow their expectations and their preferences be their guide. And he would say, those who love their dream of a Christian community more than they love the Christian community itself become destroyers of that Christian community. Even though their personal intentions may be ever so honest, earnest, and sacrificial. Even things that can be so honest, so sincere, you can have weekends as amazing as the one we've just had, and yet even that can become damaging and destructive if you allow it to unhealthily become your expectations and preferences moving forward. You can find it easy to be like this crowd going along with the flow. You can become like these Pharisees who are actually the, the ringleaders. of. Nah, actually, this is how it's supposed to be. I was worshiping recently once, like, in a worship service, and kind of out of nowhere, the thought hit me. Am I actually worshiping God in this moment, or am I worshiping the church? Am I worshiping worship? How do I know that my worship's sincere? How do I know that I'm not just doing this to, to keep up appearances? How do I know that anything I'm doing isn't just to keep up appearances, I know I'm a sneaky guy. I know I'm tricky. And there's subtleties in my own sin which will destroy me if they go unchecked. If I don't continually, every day, cry out, Hosanna. It's so easy to just think like, well, this is probably what people are expecting, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. I'm going to keep up appearances. I'm going to put on a brave face and, and be who I think that they want me to be. I'm going to join in with what kind of the status quo population is saying that we should be thinking or doing about this. I'm going to inauthentically bob along with the currents of society. Is my worship of God that inauthentic, that insincere, that broken and corrupt? And where are the expectations and preferences that took me there? Where did I, where did I go wrong? 
Hosanna, please save me. I can't see it. I, I don't know where it is, but I know for a fact I need to be saved now because I will destroy myself. So I've given up on myself gladly every day. I give up. I place my faith and trust in Jesus, the one who would ride in on a donkey's colt, who would say, you, your, your expectations and preferences are all wrong. You're going to miss me and what I actually have for you if you let those go unchecked. So follow me. Follow me this way. Wide is the path that would lead to destruction. Narrow is the path which would lead to life. And Jesus leads us that way. As our trailblazer showing us the way to go. Because we're all sneaky. We can justify things real well. That maybe they look really good. Maybe they even have like this like, like hey, yeah, this is really going well. But if we don't check our expectations, you are on the highway to becoming one of these Pharisees. Look, we're gaining nothing. The whole world's gone after them. What are we going to do about this? That can't be what it is because it's not what we've been doing. That's real honest. And yet that's where we ask God to go. That's where we ask Jesus to go. In fact, that's exactly where Jesus goes. So he rides in on Palm Sunday on a donkey's colt. And he goes straight to the temple. This structure and this institution which had become symbolic of idolatry. He goes to the heart of the matter, and he, be going, he begins going to work. Like, uh-uh, no, none of this. We're not going to be using this for anybody's personal gain. We're not going to be using this to glorify any one individual, because that's not what it's about. That's not what it's meant to point you to. If you think this is leading you towards one individual or one human group or, or leaders or their authority, you are wrong, and your expectations are already leading you there. This is about the one who would ride in on the donkey's colt, going straight to the temple, gladly bearing our cross, taking it upon himself, doing what we could not do for ourselves. That's where all the glory goes. And so Hosanna, save me. Save me now, save me tomorrow, save me the next day, save me every day, because I am sneaky and I will destroy myself. So search me and know me, O God. See if there's any grievous way within me. You know, Jody Ray, would, she was speaking this weekend on those parts of us that we, we hide, we cover up. Talking about like, using the analogy of in the garden, when Adam and Eve um, sinned and found out that they're naked, they covered up with fig leaves. And she beautifully navigated us through this passage in saying, like, God is, God, he knows, he sees you, and he would remove those things you're trying to hide behind, because you're not fooling anybody. And those things are just going to ruin you. And she would say, we fear that if we are fully known, then we won't be fully loved. That's the fear that we have. Oh, but if they know this, if I'm honest about this, and yet that's where freedom is. It's in looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, and saying, Hosanna, save me. I can't do it. You see this. You know what this is. I don't, I don't know what to do with this but you know, and so please save me. I've given up on myself. I'll give up on myself every day so that I can declare wholly, authentically, and genuinely, Hosanna, save me. It's a remarkable thing that we have in who Jesus is, that he sees everything about us, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the otherwise. And yet, Nevertheless, he chose to ride into Jerusalem. He chose to enter into the colossal mess that is humanity. And he chose to save us and set us free, that our worship would be true and genuine. It was remarkable this weekend, as last night, there'd be an hour and a half of of you guys, of youth, just praying for one another, confessing sins to one another. And I've always said, like, peer-to-peer leadership, that's the hardest leadership because nobody knows you better than your peers, right? But that also means that if you can live out your faith amidst and among your peers, that is authentic. That is genuine. You've, you've, you've declared Hosanna. Yeah, like, hey, hey, you know me. But, but this, this has really been weighing me down. I'm struggling with this, and I, I need help bringing it, to, bringing it to Hosanna. And to have seen that 
last night is remarkable. That gives me so much hope, you know? This, this old Pharisee, this guy who I know my propensities, I know my tendencies, I know my heart and the grieving, grievous ways within it. And still yet, I know there's, there's far worse things beyond that I don't even know about. And yet I see that and I'm encouraged because I see the young people declaring, Hosanna, save us. Save me today, save me tomorrow, save me every day. Whether I'm standing on this mountaintop high or whether I'm in this valley low, save me today, tomorrow, and every day. I'm going to live this thing. I'm going to live it knowing that Jesus has accomplished it all and that I am who he has invited me to be. Maybe you are in a place today where you still stand at a distance from God. Maybe you're still hiding some of those deep, dark parts about you that you wouldn't want anyone to see. And maybe, maybe you know, like, I know the invitation's there, but if I, if I do, like, he's going to make me feel this big. He's going to be, like, I'm going to be met with nothing but more guilt, more shame. And believe me when I say that is not what you will find. The moment you turn around from running away from God and you turn back towards him, he's right there. Love in his eyes. Thrilled that a child has come home. Thrilled that you, too, have placed your faith and trust in Hosanna, the only one who can save. Oh, that that would be each of our postures today. Oh, that each of us would find a peer, someone that we know knows us, and that together we would go to Hosanna, that we would surface anything that we've been hiding. Like, yeah, no, it's, I, I, I gotta get this out. I gotta hand it over. I need help with this. In whatever way that looks like, oh, that each of us would declare today, tomorrow, and every day, Hosanna, because Hosanna is all we have. It's all we have. If you think you have anything else, you're fooling yourself, and your expectations and preferences have already began depicting where you're gonna go, what it's gonna be like. Please don't do that. Please look to this king who'd ride in on a donkey's colt on Palm Sunday and for the joy that was set before him endure the cross, despising the shame. Hosanna. All oh, that every morning, that'd be the first thing we declare. Would you pray with me? And so, Father, Hosanna. Save us now, please. God, you know our hearts. You know the depths of our brokenness and our, our corruption and our sin. You see it all, and yet you, you ask us to hand it over to you, that it too would be paid for and dealt with on the cross, that we would find freedom in you and your life abundant, which you have done everything needed to make a way for. God, may none of us make this about ourselves or our things or our own things, and may each of us find in you a true and genuine worship that the whole world would just fade into the background and we would just see you basking in who you are, basking in your love and your plan and your hope for us. All that you'd receive all the glory and the praise today, tomorrow, and every day, whether we are standing on a mountaintop or in a valley. May you receive all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise this day and forevermore. And so we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Can I invite you guys to come back forward, please? As we respond, maybe you're not a youth. Maybe you've got some youth at heart. Regardless of your age, you're welcome to come down to the front and, and be, a part of, be a part of this. Um, as we respond, um, let's ask that you open your heart and be honest where, with where you're at. and No age discrimination. Come on forward. Be a part of this. Let's worship together.
As we go from this place, that we continue to declare, Hosanna, worthy are you, Yahweh, giving all of who we are over to him, going all in, that God would transform us from the inside out, going straight to the heart of the matter. And so thank you so much for joining us this morning. Just a reminder of the Good Friday service this Friday at the Westman Centennial Auditorium. We look forward to gathering as the church throughout Westman uh, for the Good Friday service. If you would like prayer this morning, uh, there's going to be a couple just at the front here to my left uh, online. There's online hosts who'd love to be praying for you. Uh, just head on over there. Uh, find a peer. Talk with someone next to you if, if you need prayer. I encourage you to take those courageous steps to do that uh, and, and declare together Hosanna as we, as we mark this Palm Sunday. So thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we'll see you next Sunday. Take care and God bless.